Three Proofs Pablo Picasso, Gertrude Stein, 1905-6 When she saw herself, finished, she said, It doesn't look like me. Picasso said, It will. Perhaps it will look like her because it is the document and will remain, while she is just a person who will fade. Now, when we think of her, we think of this painting. Picasso was planning ahead. The painting is evidence, but not proof. There's no proof that she looked like that, even though we have the document. She existed enough to be painted. She could have been an idea, but that's another kind of existing. The hand is a tool. The brush is a tool. The paint as well. There is no machine here, though the work gets done. The hammer is a tool when banging its head, but a lever when pulling up nails. A lever is a machine, has a fulcrum which can be moved to change the ratio of something or other, effort for distance. There is a fulcrum in the mind that can be moved as well. I do not know what else to say about this. Raphael, St. George and the Dragon, 1504-6 It's hard to talk about what you believe while you are believing it. Fervor reduces thought to shorthand and... All we get is an icon. Give a man a weapon, and you have a warrior. Put him on a horse, and you have a hero. The weapon is a tool. The horse is a metaphor. Raphael painted this twice. White horse facing east against the greens. White horse facing west against the yellows. The maiden flees or prays, depending. A basic dragon, the kind you'd expect from the Renaissance. Evidence of evil, but not proof. There's a companion piece as well, St. Michael. Paint angels, it's easier. You don't need the horse. Michael stands on Satan's throat, vanquishing while everything brown turns red. All of these things happened. Allegedly. When you paint an evil thing, do you invoke it or take away its power? This has nothing to do with faith, but it's still a good question. When Raphael was trying to say something about spirituality, this could be the definition of painting. The best part of spirituality is reverence. There are other parts. Some people like to hear the sound of their own voice. If you don't believe in the world, it would be stupid to paint it. If you don't believe in God, then who are you talking to? Caravaggio, David with the Head of Goliath, 1609-10. to Wanted for murder, a price on his head, Caravaggio does what he always does. He tries to paint his way out of it. This bad boy, whose moodiness came to be called the Baroque, this thug whose soul was as big as Rome and full of anvils, paints his own face on Goliath's head and offers himself up as villain, captured to escape the hammers of the law. Allegory, yes, but truth as well. But truth doesn't count in law, only proof. He took the gods and made them human. His Bacchus was a worn-out drunk, an animal likely to sleep in a pool of his own sick. He raised the status of the still life, 
made subjects out of objects, turned nature into drama, the bloom on the grapes, the bloom on the boys, leaves as important as the nudes. Exaggerated light, pure theater, evidence of a mind he delights in. Evicted from Rome, he wants back in. They want his head, and he's prepared to give it to them. He paints David in yellow pants while the Pope's nephew arranges his pardon. July 1610. Caravaggio rolls up his paintings and sets sail from Naples, heading north. They stop for supplies. No one's heard of the pardon. Jail. He pays his way out, but the boat and his paintings have sailed on without him. He follows. Malaria. He dies three days before his pardon arrives and three days after Rembrandt's fourth birthday. His painted head arrives in Rome weeks later. All painting is sent downstream into the future. René Marguerite, La Clairvoyance, 1936. Odin had ravens. Zeus was a swan. Marguerite saw an egg and painted a bird. Part of heroism is being able to see the future and still remain standing. If you don't believe in God or fate, you still must believe in narrative. I am waiting for you here in the train station, says the train station. Philosophy is thinking. Prophecy is wishful thinking. It's easy to find evidence of the future, but harder to make people believe you. This is only obvious if you've tried. Odin had proxies. Zeus had disguises. Marguerite saw the back of his head in a mirror. Not hindsight. <laughs> Not really. A debriefing. He claimed that an image was treacherous. He was right about that, but he might not have understood directionality. His paintings, though mysterious, conceal nothing. A possible world and its incomprehensibilities. A purposeful distortion, dreaming in the service of. True in the sense of carpentry.